Welcome back everyone and welcome to part six of this tutorial series where we're creating this sci-fi mech robot in Blender. So in the last part we had finished all the modeling and in this part we're gonna start lighting the scene and then we're gonna start adding some materials to the robot. And speaking of materials, this video was brought to you by my Blender procedural material packs. So if you're a regular viewer of my channel then you know that I create a lot of Blender procedural material tutorials. Tutorials. And so every time I create another 10 procedural materials, I compile them together into a procedural material pack. So each material pack has 10 materials. So if you'd like to check out the Blender procedural material packs, I'll have a link in the description where you can purchase on my Gumroad store. And purchasing the procedural material packs is a really great way to help support me and this channel. Or if you'd like to purchase one of the procedural materials individually, then you can purchase all of them individually on my Gumroad store. And also checking out my Gumroad store and Patreon page are great ways to help support me and this channel to help me keep on creating Blender tutorials and content. Or if you'd like to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, then I have tutorials on my YouTube channel on how to create all of my procedural materials. You can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist with the link in the description if you'd like to learn how to create any of my procedural materials. All right, so I'm doing the lighting first because we actually want some nice lighting so that we can preview the materials. Now, in the previous part, we used the snapping feature. I don't want that right now, so I'm going to click on this button to turn the snapping feature off. Now I am going to be using the EV rendering engine in this tutorial. You could totally use cycles if you want to. Cycles wor will work fine as well, but I'm going to be using Blender's real-time rendering engine, Blender EV. So if you go right here to the render properties on the render engine, you can just change this over to a Blender EV, or you can also use cycles if you want to. Now to make EV look a bit more realistic, I'm going to check mark the ambient occlusion, and I'm also going to check mark the bloom, and also also the screen space reflections and then I am also going to check the motion blur because we are going to be doing an animation later in the tutorial series so it will be nice just to have a little bit of motion blur and then let's hold down the Z button and we can go up move your mouse up into the rendered view and that way we can actually preview the rendered view so there we go now it all looks gray and that's because we don't really have any lighting other than just this gray background in the 3d scene so we'll be adding an HDRI and some other lights to make it look a lot better. Now also, if you scroll down here, I wanna open up the color management tab. And I want to use the view transform of Filmic. And then also right here on this look right here, I'm gonna change this to high contrast. This is gonna make the colors and the lighting more contrasty. It'll kind of pop out the colors and make them more saturated as well. And just make the final render look very nice. All right, now as you can see, everything is very blank and boring because it's just a gray background and so I'm going to be adding an HDRI in the world to get some nice realistic lighting and reflections. So I'm going to click right over here on the world properties and then if you don't already have a new world you can click on new to add a world. Now right here on this color I don't want it to be just a blank color I want it to be an HDRI instead. So I'm going to click on this little yellow dot next to the color and I'm going to change this to environment texture. And then you can see it's all pink and that's because we haven't actually added an environment texture so Blender doesn't know what to show. So we just need to click on open to open up the HDRI. And then here is the HDRI that I'm gonna be using. So this is the Suburban Field 02 HDRI and I downloaded the 1K version and the HDR version. And this is a free HDRI from a website called polyhaven.com. So link is in the description if you'd like to download the same one that I'm downloading. So once you download it, you can just select it wherever you saved it. I've just saved it in a folder with my other tutorial files and then you can click on open image. So we'll just let this load up and you can see already we have much more nice lighting and when we add a metal material it's going to be kind of reflective, kind of reflect the light and we have some very nice lighting so there's some nice bright light coming from the sun and it just looks very nice. Now the background is a little bit distracting especially when we move around you can kind of see the background changing and so I still want to see use the lighting, but I don't want to actually be able to see the background. 
So to fix this, I'm gonna click right here on the render properties, and then I'm gonna go right down here and open up this film tab right here. And we can check mark the transparent button. So now it's just transparent, so we can really just focus on the robot, but it's still lighting the robot. It's just transparent from our view. All right, so now we're gonna be creating some basic procedural metal materials. So I'm gonna select the robot's head, and then let's click right over here to a blender shading tab and then right here in the 3d space I need to hold down the Z button and go up into the rendered view to preview the actual rendered view and I'm just gonna zoom into the robots head and then right over here we have the shader editor and we're gonna be using the procedural nodes and if you're a beginner to procedural nodes I do have a procedural nodes for beginners tutorial links in the description if you'd like to watch that tutorial but I will go very slowly and show you the process so I'm just gonna click on it new right here to create a new material and on the name here I'm just gonna click on this to rename it and I'm gonna rename this to light metal light metal so we're gonna have a lighter metal and also a darker metal all right now before we continue with the procedural nodes I am gonna be using the node wrangler add-on so if you don't have that enabled you can just click on edit and then open up the preferences and then over here in the user preferences, if you click on add-ons, you can go over to the search here and you can start to search for a node and you can just check mark this node wrangler add-on. And this add-on is built into Blender so you don't need to download anything. You can just check mark it, it's already built into Blender. And then if you want to, you can also save the preferences or turn on the auto save preferences. And that way this node wrangler add-on will be turned on in all of your Blender files. And if you'd like to watch a video specifically on how to use the node wrangler, then I have a tutorial on how to use the Node Wrangler add-on for beginners, so link is in the description if you'd like to watch that tutorial. But I'm just going to close the user preferences now. So basically the Node Wrangler add-on is just going to help to speed up our workflow. It's going to have some more shortcut keys and allow us to do things faster and more efficient within the procedural nodes. So now let's create the base metal material. So to start off, I'm going to press Shift A. Shift A is going to bring up the add, and I want to go to the search here to search for a node. I'm going to search for the ambient occlusion node. And I'm just going to click on this and drop it here. Now, the amazing feature about the Node Wrangler add on is that you can preview different nodes and it's going to show you what that node looks like. So, if you hold down the Control and Shift key, you can then select different nodes and that is going to add this viewer node right here and it's going to plug it up to the viewer. And then, if you are in the rendered view, you can actually see what the node is looking like on the object. And you can see here's the ambient occlusion, so it looks pretty cool. And where those crevices are it's kind of darker and so that is the look that I'm going for and this will help to make the metal material look a bit more grungy and old and make it look a little bit dirty in the cracks and also real quick you might be wondering if we're gonna be adding any other lights and I will be adding more lights later in this part of the tutorial um, but I just want to do the materials for now and then we're gonna be adding some cool like sci-fi red lights and blue lights on the object uh, to make the robot character look very cool but for now I'm gonna do the materials the lighting is decent with that HDRI, so I will finish the lighting later at the end of this part. Now I want to make this ambient occlusion much more strong and contrasty because right now it's just kind of gray. So to do this, I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go here to the search, and I'm going to search for a color ramp. So let's click on the color ramp node and we're going to drop it right in here in this wire and that's going to plug it up. And then the viewer node will preview it. Or you can control shift and select different nodes to preview it. So we can use this color ramp to make it more contrasty. So you can see there's a white tab and a black tab. So if we start to drag these together, now it's going to be much more contrasty. So I'm going to drag the black tab right here kind of in the middle at about a 0.5. The position value is about at 0.5 kind of in the middle. And you can see now that ambient occlusion is much more strong and dark. Now this ambient occlusion is pretty smooth, and so I want to mix it with a procedural noise texture to make it a bit more random. So I'm going to press Shift A, let's go to the search here, and I'm going to search for a noise texture. Let's click on this noise texture, and I'm just going to drop the noise texture down here underneath the color ramp. And then to preview the noise texture, I can control Shift and select the noise texture. That's going to preview it. Now you can see that the noise texture does look a little bit stretched, so if you select the noise texture you can press Control T and that is using another feature from the node wrangler and it's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping now this mapping is used just to like transform the location rotation and scale the noise texture but I don't need it so I'm going to click on the mapping and press X to delete it 
I do want to use the texture coordinate. So I'm going to bring the texture coordinate over and I want to use the object coordinates. So we're going to pull out a wire and I'm going to put the object into the vector. And this way, by using the object coordinates, it's going to place the noise texture on the object more evenly. And that's looking much better. So now we can change some of the settings of this noise texture. So I'm going to turn the scale value to like a three, and then I do want it to be very detailed. So let's turn the detail all the way up to the max, which is 15. And then I also want to add a little bit more roughness. So on this roughness value, I'm going to change it to like a 0.6. So now you can see if you look there at the noise, it's very detailed. So I now want to play around with the colors and make it a bit more gray. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go here to the search and I'm going to search for another color ramp node. Let's click on this color ramp node and I'm going to drop it right here after the noise texture. And then I can also press B for the box select, just box select these nodes and I can press G to grab and I'm going to bring the nodes back a little bit. All right, and then make sure you control shift and select the color ramp to preview the color of the color ramp. So I want to make it more contrasty. So I'm going to drag this out and I'm going to drag it about halfway. So it's much more contrasty, but then I don't want it to be super dark. I want to make it more gray. So let's click on the black tab right here, click on the color, and I'm going to make this kind of a gray color, but not that bright, maybe a bit darker. So something like that. And if you want to use the exact same color that I'm using, you can click over on the hex value to change the hex color. And I'm going to be using a hex value of three, six times. So that's the gray color that I'll be using. So we now have this really cool map here and I want to now mix it with the ambient occlusion. So I'm going to select the color ramp and then hold down the shift key and select this color ramp. So both of these are selected. Then I can press control zero and control zero is going to add the mix RGB node and it's minimized. But if I click on the arrow, that's going to open it up and I can just bring it up here. And so the mix node is going to mix two different colors together. So we have this color ramp and this color ramp and the mix RGB node is going to mix them together. Now I want to take the color ramp and I actually want to put that into the factor because the factor value is going to determine where it's going to be color one and where it's going to be color two. So if I just drag this back and forth, now it's only the noise, but now it's only the ambient occlusion, but I instead want the noise texture to show up where the ambient occlusion is. So it looks very noisy and random. So I'm going to take the color ramp and put that into the factor. Now this bottom color ramp, I'm going to put that into color one. So change the wire and plug it into color one. Now color two, I'm going to click on color two and I'm just going to make this fully white. So now if you look in here, if you look closely, you can see that the noise texture is only showing up where the ambient occlusion is. So there's some noise there and some noise there. And basically there's only noise where the ambient occlusion is. So that's very cool. So let's press B for the box select. I'm just going to box select these nodes and I'm just going to bring them up a little bit. So now what I want to do is just mix this color here with another noise texture just to make it nice and random and give it some more noise to make it look like kind of some worn metal. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for a, another noise texture. Let's click on the noise texture and I'm going to drop it underneath the first noise texture. And then I can control shift and select this noise texture to preview it. And then again, I want to use the object coordinates. So I'm going to plug the object into the vector. And when I do that, you can see the texture is placed on the object more evenly. So then on this noise texture, I want to take the scale and I want to turn that down to like a two. And then I will also want to turn the detail all the way up to the max, which is 15. So it has more detail. Now I want to make this noise texture more subtle. So it's just very subtle and hard to see. So I'm going to click on this color ramp right here and I'm going to press shift D and shift D is going to duplicate nodes. And I want to put this right here before this color ramp. So I can now drag this back because I want to make it much less contrasty. And then I want to make these colors very gray. So I'm going to click on this tab down here, click on the color, and I'm going to make this quite a bit brighter. And if you want to use the same exact gray color that I'm using, you can put in a hex value of 7F. 7F, 7F. All right, and then this white tab here, I wanna make this a bit darker, so click on the white tab, and then click on the color, and I'll just make this a little bit darker. And the hex value that I'll be using for this one is 
BF, BF, BF. You don't have to use the exact same color that I'm using. You can play around with the colors and get something that you like, or you can use my hex values if you want to. All right, so now we have this nice gray, subtle noise texture. So I now want to mix this into this color here. So I'm gonna select the mix, hold down the shift key and select this bottom color ramp. And then again, I can press control zero, and that is going to add the mix RGB. So I can open this up and we want to mix these two together. So I just want to add the dark values. So instead of these being set to mix, I want to click on this and I instead want to change it to darken. This way it's only going to add the dark values. And then I want to take this mix right here and I want to put this into color two. And then this bottom color ramp is going to go into color one. So now I can drag the factor and as I drag the factor, it's going to show more and more of the ambient occlusion. And I want the factor to be all the way to one so I can see a lot of the ambient occlusion. So now we have the ambient occlusion, but then we also have all that noise just kind of around the metal. So I now want to put this into the base color of the principled shader. So I can take the color and let's plug that into the base color. And then to preview the shader, I can control shift and select the shader. And that is going to preview it. So that's looking pretty cool but it doesn't really look like metal it kind of just looks like plastic so I want to make it look like metal so to make it metal I'm going to take the metallic value and turn that all the way up to one on the principal shader we'll just wait for that shader to load up and now that's very shiny and it looks much more like metal and you can also see that bloom taking effect there kind of where it's bright there's that little glow there that looks pretty cool as well now this metal shader is very very smooth and I want to make it just a little bit bumpy so what I'm going to do is take this color right here from this bottom color ramp and I want to put this into the normal so I'm going to pull out a wire and plug that into the normal and the normal is going to give it some fake bump now when we do that something looks really weird the shading is really messed up and why this is happening why there's that shading issue is because this is color data you can see it's a yellow dot but then this is normal data and it is a purple dot so we need a node in here to convert color data into normal data so to convert this I'm going to press shift a Let's go to the search and I'm gonna search for a bump node and we're gonna drop the bump node in between the wire. So the bump node can convert color data or black and white data into normal data. Now it's still not working and that's because we need to take the color and we need to put it into the height value instead. So now it's gonna convert it to a proper normal data and now the metal looks super bumpy. It looks like someone maybe took a hammer and like slammed that metal and made it all bumpy. Now that's way too strong and I wanna make it much more subtle. So let's take the strength value right here and I'm going to turn this strength value way down to a 0.06 so just a point is 06. And now if you zoom in there, you can definitely see there's some noise there. So it kind of looks like some rough metal, but it still is pretty smooth. Now I also want to plug some data into the roughness because I want some parts to be more shiny and other parts to be more rough. So to do this, I'm going to take the darken and I'm going to take the color from the darken, pull out a wire, and I'm going to put that into the roughness. Now I want to have more control over this. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search here and I'm going to search for another color ramp and let's just drop the color ramp in between the darken and the roughness. So now if I look around here, you can see some parts are a bit more shiny and other parts are a bit more rough. And if you want to play around with this, you can drag the black tab. So if I drag the black tab over, now it's very shiny. It's like a super reflective metal, or I can drag this back if I want it to be more rough. So if I drag the white tab over, now it's a very rough metal. I'm just going to leave it how it is. I just want it to be black and white. Um, so something like that I think is pretty good. But you can of course change this to your liking. So that that is the very base metal material. So I now want to add this material to all of the other objects. So I'm going to press B for the box select. I'm just going to box select the entire robot, but then hold down the shift key and make sure this head is selected last. And I know it's selected last because it has the yellow outline. So I now want to copy this material to all the other objects. So I'm going to press control L. Control L is going to bring up the link and transfer data, and I want to link the materials. So there we go. So now the entire robot has this really nice base procedural metal material. Let's press control S again to save the project. So I now want to add a different material on the eye to make the eye nice and shiny and kind of make it look like some glass or some plastic. So I'm going to select the face object again and I'll press the tab key to go into edit mode. And then I want to bring this side panel out and I'm going to go right down here and open up 
the material properties. So within each object, there are material slots for all of the different materials within that object. So right now we just have this one light metal. So I want to add another material in this object. So I'm going to click on the plus here to create a new material in the slot and then I can click on new and I want to rename this material to eyes because this material is going to be the robot's eyes. Then I want to assign this material to some faces. So I'm going to press the A key to deselect everything. Hover your mouse over this object here and press L. That's going to select the linked vertices and then make sure you have the eyes selected. So I can now click on assign and that's going to assign the eye material to the eye object. So I can tab to go back to object mode. So I now just need to change this material to make it look more like eyes. So I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to take the base color and make this fully black. And then I also want the eyes to be very shiny. So let's take the roughness value and I'm going to turn this down to like a 0.1. So now it is very reflective and shiny and it's really that simple. So that is it for the eye material. All right, now right up here on the robot's head, there's these little circle things, these little cylinders, and I want to create a basic plasticky material for those cylinders. So I'm gonna press tab to go into edit mode. I can press A to deselect everything, and then just hover your mouse over the objects and press L, that's gonna select the linked vertices. So I wanna do the same thing. So I can click on the plus right here to add a new material in the slot. Let's click on new, and I can just recall this material plastic. And then make sure you have that selected, make sure you have the plastic selected, and you can click on the assign button, and that's going to assign the material to that area. So I can now press the tab key to go back to object mode. So this material is going to be pretty simple. I'm going to take the base color and I'm going to turn that down so it's kind of a gray plastic. And if you want to use the same color that I'm using on the base color, you can go to the hex value and you can type in 1F, 1F, 1F. And then I do want to make it a bit more shiny. So let's turn the roughness down to like a 0.2 so that is a shiny plastic material. And then I also want to give it just a little bit of random bump. So let's make this a little bit bigger. So down here, I'm going to put a noise tech texture into the normal. So let's press shift A. I'm going to go to the search and I actually first want to search for a Voronoi texture. So let's click on the Voronoi texture and I'm going to put this down here. And then to preview it, I can control shift and select the Voronoi texture. Now, just like we did with the other object with the Voronoi texture selected, I'm going to press control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. Now I don't need the mapping so I can click on it and press X to delete it. But then I want the object to be going into the vector. So it's using the object coordinates. And then I want to add a noise texture to distort the placement of the Voronoi texture. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for a noise texture and we're going to drop the noise texture right here in between this wire. So now the noise texture, the noisiness of the noise texture is actually distorting the placement of the Voronoi. Now on the noise texture, I'm going to turn the scale to like a one and then I'm going to turn the detail all the way up to 15. So it's very detailed. And then I'm also going to turn this Voronoi texture scale to like a one as well. So I now want to plug the distance value, this black and white value into the normal to give it some bump and I can control shift and select the principal shader. Now I want to convert this to normal data. You can see it's all gray and weird. So let's press shift A. I'm going to go to the search and I'm going to search for a bump node and let's just drop the bump node right in here between the Voronoi and the principal. And then again, to convert this to normal data, we need to plug this into the height value. And now if you look at this this plastic here, wait for the material to load up in Blender EV. You can see that it's very, very rough. Now that is super rough and bumpy, so I want to make it much more subtle. So let's turn the bump strength down to like a 0.03. So now if I look around here, you can see there's definitely some bump, but it is very subtle. All right, so that's it for the plastic material. So the next material that I want to create is kind of a shiny metal for the pipes. So let's press tab to go into edit mode press A to deselect everything. And then I'm just going to hover my mouse over all the pipe objects and press L. So let's go back into the rendered view. I can actually make this smaller and then just hover your mouse over all the pipes and you can press the L key. That's going to select the linked vertices. So there's a pipe here. So press L and L right there. And then also right down here underneath the robot, uh, let's go right here to the face select and then press L and L and L. All right, so now we have all of those pipes selected and we will add it to the antenna too, but the antenna is a different object. All right, so now we've selected all the pipes. So back over here in the material slots, I'm gonna click on the plus to create a new material. Let's click on new here and I'm gonna call this pipes. 
and then we want to assign the pipes to the actual pipe objects. So make sure the pipes is selected and click on assign. And then I can go back into object mode. So let's create a basic pipe material. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for a noise texture. Let's click on the noise texture and I'm going to drop it here. And then I can control shift and select the noise texture to preview it on the pipes. And then just like the other objects, I can press control T to add the texture coordinate and mapping, but I don't want the mapping. So I can press X to delete it and let's put the object into the vector. And then on the scale here, I'm going to turn this to just like a three. And then I also want to turn the detail all the way up to the max, which is 15. Now it's not very contrasty. You can't see it that well. So to make it more contrasty, I can press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for a color ramp and let's drop the color ramp right in here. And then I can drag these together and that's going to make it much more contrasty. So I'm going to drag the white out and also drag the black out quite a bit as well. So that's more contrasty. And then I'm also going to click on the white tab and I'm going to make this just a little bit darker so it's not fully white. And the hex value that I'll be using for this one is D9, D9, D9. So I want to take this color now and I'm going to put it into the roughness. And this way, some parts are going to be a bit more rough and other parts are going to be a bit more shiny. And then I can control shift and select the principled BSDF to preview it. And also this is a metallic material. It is made out of metal. So let's turn the metallic value all the way to one. Now this is a very bright color. So let's take this base color and I'm going to turn this down a little bit. So it's a bit more of a gray color. And again, the hex value that I'll be using is 9B, 9B, 9B. So you can punch that in, in the base color on the principle if you want to use the same exact color that I'm using. Now you can see these pipes are very, very shiny and I don't want them to be quite that shiny. So let's actually play around with the color ramp and we can change how rough and shiny it is. So I'm just going to drag these values around. I do want it to be somewhat shiny, but I also want to drag this white tab over to make it a bit more rough and you can bring them together to make them more contrasty. So I think something like that is pretty good. So there's just a bit of noise there. And I think I'll also turn up the noise texture because if I drag the noise texture up, you're able to see that a bit better. So maybe Maybe I'll just turn this noise texture to like a 10 or maybe like a 12. I think that is a bit better. So now there's a little bit of noise there on the pipes. And then I do want to give the pipes just a tiny little bit of bump. So let's take the color and I'm going to put that into the normal. And then again, to convert this to normal data, I can press shift A and I can search for a bump node. We're going to click on the bump node and I'm going to drop it between the color ramp and the normal. And then to convert it to normal data, I can put the color into the height value of the bump. And then again, just to make it very subtle, if I wait for EV to load up, you can see it's very noisy and bumpy. That's way too strong. So let's turn the strength value to like a 0.02. So now if you zoom in there really close, you can see it's just a little bit bumpy. All right, and that is it for the pipes material. So let's press control S again to save. Now I also want to create a darker variation of the base metal. So what I'm going to do is click on the plus here again to add a new material in the slot. And then I want to click on the drop down and I'm going to click on the light metal. So we now have two light metals. Now I want to duplicate this so that it is a separate material, but keep all the same data. So click on the light metal and I'm going to click on this button right here. It kind of looks like two little pieces of paper that is going to duplicate the material, but it's going to keep the same information. So now instead of it being called light metal, I can just rename this and I'm going to rename it instead to dark metal. So now I want to assign this dark metal to some of these other objects. So I'm going to press the tab key to go into edit mode and then I can press A to deselect everything. And I'll make this a little bit bigger so I can see it better. So I'm now going to hover my mouse over these objects and press the L key that is going to select the linked vertices. And I'm just going to press L and L. We're going to select those ones. Let's also go over here to the side and press L to select that piece as well. And then also these pieces here. So L and L and L. We're going to select those ones and also right in here. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and select that face and then hold down the shift and alt key and select that. That as well. So by holding down the shift and alt key, you can select the loop of faces. Let's navigate to the back here and I'm going to press L and L to select those pieces. And then also down here, L and L and just select all those ones as well. And then right up here on the top, I want to hold down the shift key. We're going to select all of these faces and then I want to select the loops on the side. So hold down the shift and alt key and select right there. 
hold down the Shift and Alt key, select there, and hold down the Shift and Alt key and select there. And then right back here, just navigate over to the front, and I'm gonna do the same thing. So Shift, Alt, select that loop, Shift, Alt, select that loop, and then just hold down the Shift key and select that face and that face as well. Although I do wanna select some parts down here, so L and L and L. And we will also be adding them to the bolts as well. We're gonna add the dark metal to the bolts, but I'll do that all at the same time in a moment. All right, so now that we have all of those selected, right here in the material slots, I want to select the dark metal. Then I can click on the assign button and that's going to assign the dark metal to the spots. And I can tab to go to object mode. Now you can see that nothing is really changing and that's because the dark metal and the light metal look exactly the same. So we can just change the dark metal and then we'll see that darker metal show up. So to make this metal darker, I'm gonna go right down here to this bottom color ramp. And I'm gonna click on this tab and then click on this color and I'm gonna make it darker. And the hex value that I'll be using for this one over here is gonna be three, six times. That's gonna be the dark color that I'm using. And then let's click on this whiter tab and I wanna click here and I wanna make this one darker as well. So you can really see that starting to come through. And the color for this one, if you go to the hex value, it's gonna be six, six times. Now you can see that this dark metal is very, very shiny and reflective and I wanna make it less reflective. So we can change that by changing the color ramp colors. So I'm gonna click on this black tab right here, make sure you have the dark metal selected. And if I start to make this color brighter, it's gonna make the middle more rough. So I'm just gonna make it kind of brighter, kind of to something like that. And again, the hex value that I'm gonna be using will be 9E, 9E, 9E. So now that we've made that metal more rough, it's not quite as dark and I do think that looks better. But now you can see we have all those darker areas on the robot's head. Now I also wanna add the dark metal to all the bolts. So let's press the tab key to go into edit mode. And then I'm going to press the L key to select that big piece. And then L and L to select those pieces as well. And also the L key to select that. Then I'm going to press the H key and the H key is gonna hide all of the selection. And then also press the L key and the L key and just select all of the pipes here. Let me just make this a bit bigger. So L to select those pipes and also L and L and L to select all of those pipes. And then also the eyeball right here, just press the L key to select that. So I can now press the H key to hide that. And also right here, press L to select this pipe and H to hide it. And then one more thing right here, press the L key to select this and H to hide it. So if I now press the A key to select everything, you can see that the only objects that weren't hidden are the bolts. So just press the A key to make sure all the bolts are selected now. So in edit mode with all the bolts selected, I can click on the dark metal and I can click on assign. And then I can press Alt H to unhide everything and I can tab to go back to object mode. So now those bolts are all darker. All right, now we also have this other object right here and this object is the object that doesn't have any mirroring. So I'm gonna select this object and press the tab key to go into edit mode. And then press the A key and make sure everything is deselected. And I'm gonna first zoom over to this object and I'm gonna press the L key to select it. Now I want to add the dark metal to this object. So right here in the material slots, we can click on the plus here to add a new material. And then we already created the dark metal. So I can just click on the drop down, and we can add the dark metal to the material slot. And then make sure just this object is selected and I'm gonna click on the assign button. All right, press the A key to deselect, hover your mouse over the antenna and press L, and we wanna add the pipe material to this one. So again, let's click on the plus here to add a new material in the slot. I can click on the drop down, and I want to add the pipes. And then I can click on the assign button, make sure the pipes is selected when you do that, click on assign, and now if you go to object mode, you can see that has the pipe material. All right, tab back into edit mode, press the A key to deselect, and we just need to add the materials to these objects here. So I'm going to press the L key, that's going to select that object, and then press the L key to select that one. Let's click on the dark metal, and then I can click on assign. Press the A key to deselect, and then there is just one more material here that I want to add, so I'm going to press the L key to select the light, and then I want to create a new material. So let's click on the plus again to add a new material in the slot. I can click on new, and I want to call this like red light. So just rename the material right here to red light. And then right here, we can play around with the material. So because this is gonna be emitting light, I don't wanna use the principled, so I can click on the principled and I can press X to delete it. 
Let's now press Shift A. I'm going to go to the search and I'm going to start to search for the emission shader. Click on the emission. We're going to drop it here and I can plug the emission into the surface. So the emission is going to actually be emitting light. So then what you can do is just make sure that's still selected. Make sure the red light is selected and click on the assign button. So if I tab to go back to object mode, you can see that's now emitting light. And then I want to make this much brighter. So let's turn the strength value up to like 50. So it's much brighter. And now that actually looks like a little light or a headlamp or something on the robot. And then I do want to make it a red color. So click on the white and I'm going to make it red. Now, if you make it fully red, you can see that kind of looks a bit pinky or red. And I don't really want that. I'm going to make it a little bit less saturated. So I'm going to drag this up and this way the actual light is white, but then around the light where the bloom is, where the glow is, that is red. And if you want to use the same exact color that I'm using on the hex value for this red color, I'm going to use a hex value of FF4A3D. All right, there we go. So we now have a really cool light on the robot. All right, so I'm going to press Control S to save, and then let's click right back over here on the layout. So now I just want to add the other lights which are around the robot, and then we'll be finished with this part. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to go right down here to a light and I'm going to add an area light. I can press G to grab and then R to rotate and a G to grab. I can also press seven for top view and I'm going to rotate this over and just kind of stick it here pointed at the robot. And I want to rotate it over and kind of stick it right here. You can also double tap the R key to do the trackball rotation. And I'm going to scale this up even more and just kind of stick it right back here. Now, if you click right over here, you can go to the object data properties and that's going to go to the light settings. So on this power right here, I want to make this much stronger. So let's turn the power up to like a 500. And there we go. Now it's a bit bright, but I actually want to make it even brighter. So I'm going to change it to a 5000. So now we have this really cool rim light, which is behind the robot. And we're going to be looking at the robot kind of like from here in the animation. So we have this really cool rim light pointed at the robot, although let's move it a little bit farther back. And then I don't want it to be a white color. I want it to be a red color. So let's click on this color and I'm going to make this kind of a red color. So now that looks very cool and sci-fi. Now I want to make this light higher up and down. So what I'm going to do is click on this shape right here and I'm going to change this to rectangle. So I can now drag these values and I'm actually going to drag the Y value to make it go up and down. And this way it's going to be kind of like a, a long rim light and it's going to light up more of the character up and down because if it's really small, it's not going to light up quite as much of the whole robot. So if it's longer, it'll have more red areas all along the back of the robot. All right. So I now want to add another blue light right over here. So let's press seven on the numpad for top view and I can press shifty to duplicate. Let's bring this over and I want to rotate it over. All right. And then I can navigate back down here to kind of preview this. So to make this very cool and sci-fi, I'm going to be adding a blue light. I think blue and red colors are really cool for like sci-fi. So I'm going to click on this color and I'm going to make this kind of a blue color. All right. So something like that, you can just kind of rotate that around. So we now have kind of a red rim light and a blue rim light. And I'm going to leave the power at 5,000. And then I also want to add a bigger light kind of right up here. So I'm going to select this light. Let's press Shift D to duplicate it. Let's also press Control S to save. I can rotate this over because I want it to be kind of pointed down at the robot. And then also on the shape here, I don't want it to be rectangle. So I'm going to change this one back to a square and I can scale this up, make it pretty big. And I want to rotate this over. So this is going to be a very bright light shining down on the robot. And also if you zoom in here, you can see that it's going to kind of reflect in the robot's eyes and that will look very cool as well. I just want to kind of rotate this light and kind of stick it up here. And then it is a very strong blue color. So let's just take this color here and I'm going to make this much more white. I want it to be slightly blue, but not very blue. So just kind of a slight blue color, something like that. So then if I select this light and press H to hide it, and then Alt H to unhide it, you can see that is the difference. So we now have some nice bright light shining down on the robot. All right. And then I also just want to add a little bit more light here just to kind of fill out this area here, which is a little, which is a little bit dark. So let's press shift A. I'm going to go to light and let's add a point light. I can press seven for top view. I'm going to press G to grab, just kind of move this light over here. Now on the light settings, I want to just change the power to like 1000. So it's somewhat bright, but not super bright. And then I do want to make this color just very slightly blue, but mostly white. All right. So now if I look over here, you can kind of see what this is doing. So it's just filling in that area and let's also make a few of them. So I'm going to press seven again for top view. I can press shift D to duplicate. 
and shift D to duplicate. So we now have three lights. So we now have a total of six lights. So this is a red rim light and a blue rim light back here. We also have kind of a white light just kind of shining down. And then we have these three little lights just to kind of brighten this up. And then of course we also have the HDRI in the background just to give some nice realistic lighting and reflections. All right, so I'll just press Control S again to save. And this is gonna wrap it up for this part of the tutorial series. So in the next part, we are going to be adding these materials to all of the different objects. So by the end of the next part, all of the materials will be finished. So again, thank you so much for following this tutorial. I hope you've been enjoying it and I hope you've been learning a lot as well. So when the next part is released, it'll be right up there on the end screen and the link in the description. So thank you for watching and I will see you in part seven.